part. Thank you. So um, know that we're gonna record this part, but we're going to give some last words. And I asked a few people to just stand with me in that and releasing what the Lord had given them concerning the instructions that I gave. Now, listen, I didn't tell them what to write. I um, just trust the spirit of the Lord on the inside of them that he would give them just an encouragement and a strength for you all and for myself as well as we go into 2022. This is a time of celebration and as much trouble as we may have around us, you all know that this is a time of, of joy. Even though sorrow is in the midst, God is definitely with us. So don't forget that. Don't forget that at all. So whoever wants to go first, I would love for you to just jump in and take charge. It has nothing to do with first, second, third, or last. Be profound, be powerful, and just let the Lord have his way. And give us those last words going into 20, um, ending 2021 and going into 2022. So let's get started. Whoever wants to jump in. You need to unmute yourselves, so I will ask you that. If you can't unmute yourself, let us know in the chat, and we'll help you with that. And we are recording this segment of it. But when we have discussions, normally we don't record any of that, so you can be free, and you can feel as if um, this is a safe space. So for the next 30 minutes, this will be recorded, the next 20 minutes or so. Come on, poets, jump in there. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, this is Minister Christine. And um, I wrote this piece, just wrote it in response to Apostle's request. And it's titled Last Words. Last words are like last rites spoken over the dying. Last words are like grave clothes wrapped around living souls. Last words are like grave stones blocking the sound of rattling bones. Last words, Lazarus, come forth. Last words are past words, like last night, last week, last year, last relationship, last job, last trauma, last drama, last mindset, last way of thinking, eating, drinking, speaking, last meal, last wheel. Last words are past words. Last words are like last rites spoken over the dying who are about to be reborn, about to be torn from one existence to another, far greater than the former. Simon's last words were, I swear I am not with him. I do not know him. What is his name? Peter's new and fresh words were, Lord Jesus, you know I love you. I will take up my cross and follow you. I will feed your sheep. Those were his fresh words. Those were his new words. Saul's last words were, every heretic who believes in this Jesus must die. Paul's new and fresh words were, who are you, Lord? Show me what I must suffer and become for the sake of your name, that I may know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your sufferings, being made conformable to your death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but now. Those were his fresh words. Those were his new words. Jesus' last words were, it is finished. The new and fresh words of the resurrected Christ were, wait for me, I will send my spirit to empower you. I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you now and forever. Those were his fresh words. Those were his new words. Last words. 
Why are we still looking for last words as though we are amongst the dying? It's time out for dying. It's time out for trying. It's time out for crying. It's time to ascend. It's time to rise up and be that fresh word, that new word. Behold, I have given you a new name, says the Lord. Behold, I have called you out from amongst the dying. I have called you to ascend above last words and to become a fresh and new word, a word of resurrection life, a word of transition, a word of transformation, a word of revolution. Because last words are like last rites spoken over the dying. Last words are like grave clothes wrapped around living souls. Last words are like grave stones blocking the sound of rattling bones. Last words. Lazarus, come forth. That is powerful. Oh my goodness. If I had my keys, I'd be shaking them right now and <laughs> standing you, up. That is amazing. Listen, if there is feedback for her, please feel free to share it in the chat. I will tell you one of the um, most amazing things about your piece, just the flow of it for me was how you combine passwords, the last words, the last job, last week. It's like Look, it framed everything so that we can understand really what last words can look like and what that might be in the use of our own lives. Because sometimes we think of last words, the last thing we said, and that's one way. But this way causes us to see what's finished. It causes us to see what has been completed. It causes us to see what has been left behind and what we can now say, okay, that's over. Last week is done. <laughs> Last <Yeah>. night is over. <laughs> and that's why we're doing this. It's so profound when you give an assignment and you can see how the spirit of the Lord moves in that. And so thank you. If anyone else, let's see, we have um, Chiquita um, recorded a, a line from your poem. It said, Lazarus, come forth. Deborah said, wow, last words, this hit home hard after being in a strong season of grief. And that's powerful because there, if, when we're in grief, that means a last word took place, that there were last words and we have to move forward from that. Dominique said, Lazarus, come forth. Janice and Mashani said, powerful. And Darlene, she said this, yes, it does show us what is finished, what relationships were finished, including last jobs. Absolutely. Thank you, Christine, for sharing. And I so appreciate this. This is profound for us. <laughs> Whoever would like to um, share next, please go forth. I think this is important. I hope you all are listening and hearing. My last words is that you didn't give up even when it hurt. And when things got rough, you set your eyes on the one who continually grants rebirth. And you find yourself being made brand new. And suddenly you realize that the real gift of the new year was always within you. The transformation you seek has already sought you. For trials work as patience, and patience work as character, and character work as experience, and experience hope. The experience is that we can clearly see that God has been faithful to us, even before our birth. And so now these are the new words for 2022, is that the very breath of the faithful and living God is still willing to continually blow into you. For man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Not out of the mouth of the news, nor out of the mouth of social media views, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Not out of the mouth of the news, nor out of the mouth of social media views, 
not out of the mouth of the CDC, but out of the breath of the one who says, will you come sup with me? And even when you can't see, and I heard him say, your ascension is my provision. Your ascension is my provision. And when you become aware of my provision, it will be through your ascension. For I am within you. And I provide for you as you learn to ascend in me. And as you focus on me, your peripheral will be redefined. The cloudiness and disorientation won't continue to blind. No faulty promises or dilapidating prophecies that are empty on the inside. But I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. And the real expectation of this new year is that my breath was always near. For I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. So we declare and decree that the wind of God is committed to your indwelling and the rivers of living water is committed to your establishing. We declare and decree that God is overflowing right into you, renewing your inner, your inner man that was weary because of what the cares of this world did to you. We declare and decree that he's causing our minds to be renewed with his strength again, our hearts to be revived by his breath again, a simple realization that Christ was always within. We declare and decree that we will look to the hills from which cometh our help, and we will ascend with grace and the promises he kept. We declare and decree that when God is exalted, the temporal must bow. All of the heaviness must bow down. We declare and decree that even the spaces in us that were worn down are strengthened with courage now. And as we breathe him in, he satisfies us with good things. And suddenly, the temporal finds its place. He established us in his grace. And he establishes us in his reconciliation. And in that place, we find tremendous grace. So drink deeply of the well that will never run dry and be established by the one on the inside. We are made new through our decision to see him who constantly makes all things new. And when the world is dark and we hear, I thought this year was going to be different, remember that Christ in you has already secured our newness. Mm, thank you, Dominique. Oh my goodness, that is powerful. Listen, I always like for people to give um, poets and, and the people who are sharing feedback. So I really would love for you to just give some shout out of love to Dominique. Listen, as I was listening to this, I really, really received one line profoundly, which, is, which just spoke to me. There are others and I may mention them, but the experiences that we've had, both positive and negative, which is what I pull from that, the experiences results in our faith and it results in our faithfulness, the increase of those areas. And so I hope we can take that into the new year because the hope of everything that we go through is that the Lord provides us the faith and the strength to continue. You always said the new gift is always in us and it is, it really, really is. You guys, listen, newness is already in you. How could that not be true? If we are really the temple of Holy Spirit, tonight Dominique has caused us to remember that we are the temple of Holy Spirit. So you must receive that. If there is no newness in your life, then there's something that's not being accessed. There's something locked up. There's something that needs to be let go because absolutely, let's hear some of these comments. You also said that, um, you know, you talked about the breath and you talked about, and we need to know that every breath is an opportunity for newness as well. I want to go back and read some of this. Um, Chiquita said, let's see, let me go back up. Um, uh, Lejeune, she said, Christ in me has already secured our newness. Chiquita said, newness is in me. Absolutely. Deb said, now that's a final word. <laughs> Joy said, yes, awesome, awesome. Newness, newness is always within you. Christine reiterated that as well. 
Dominique, um, you even wrote, you said newness is already in us, hallelujah. So we are celebrating Christ in us tonight because we are. He is the hope of glory. He is the hope of everything. And if we're going to really celebrate New Year, no matter what you're going through, this has been um, a challenging year for some. It's been the most prosperous year ever for others. 2020 was the same way. Listen, we just have to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is with us. Deborah said, made new. Janice said, yes. And listen, um, Nico said dilapidated prophecy. She quoted something that um, uh, Dominique shared, and that's the truth. Some things, and we're going to listen. Part of the message that I'm actually teaching tonight kind of touches on that. And so we're going to look at that. And, and she said, wow, very powerful. It is. It is. Your ascension is my provision. That's what Darlene said. And Noel said, amen, God is with us through it all. He really, really is. I tell you, sometimes I feel like I miss testimony service. So we're probably gonna have to have some time where we kind of groom people and giving short testimonies so we can um, learn how to just sh share those moments and celebrations with one another because that's encouraging. And that's building us up. So thank you, Dominique. Powerful. Y'all already know what I'm going to ask. So just go on and send them to me. Get them ready. Don't hold back because we're going to post them in all the groups and on all the pages. Just put your copyright information in and I look forward to that. So don't even bother. Send it to me, not by text. <laughs> Some of you millennials and y'all be sending people stuff through text and we don't know how to get that stuff out of there and on the Facebook except pinching it and copying and pasting it and putting it on a page. But listen, whoever is next, I want to hear from you. I'm being blessed tonight. Thank you again, Dominique. Hi, Apostle. Hello. And everyone. <laughs> and the <a> dog. <laughs> you hey, Candor. Hello, Candor. Right here. <laughs> no fuss tonight, and I buy shot. <laughs> Go okay. ahead. <laughs> Let me share. It came through like a storm and changed the status quo in every norm. It shifted much of what we'd come to know and put on quite a circus show. It, it, it erupted many of our plans and placed on many of you new demands. But even with all the worry and fear, I wasn't far away, but very, very near. Many came to know me in a brand new way, despite the lies the naysayers say. Many have experienced my might with newness of vision and clarity of sight. Many dreams began to expand as you got a better survey of your promised land. What once was forgotten was renewed as my heart was fervently pursued. Uncomfortable decisions many had to make, but it was for their destiny's sake. A great deposit was made as many jumped in the deep instead of way deemed. And now the new and unknown is a pun and the continual inner work will be done. For much will blossom and much will bloom, though many are declaring doom. For I will establish many of your plans as you continue to be guided by my hands. For your understanding and wisdom has increased and I'll continue to pour and release. For many will begin to watch and see the beautiful work I've done within thee. For I fortified and strengthened your foundations with purity and hope for the nations. For you are those who will forever speak truth with godly authority and heavenly proof. For many are waiting for the pureness of your poor and be drawn to the boldness of your roar. For this season is not like most, 
and you'll find in me a greater testimony and boast. For many of you mirror and reflect the greatness of my character. Wait. For many of you mirror and reflect the greatness of my character, grace, love, and intellect. For as you stayed focused and aligned, you will experience great joy and peace of mind. Get ready for delight as you experience my might and the fullness of your birthright. Get ready to explore new aspects of my heart's core as you understand me more and more. Get ready to advance as skills and graces enhance while overcoming your circumstance. Get ready for me to fulfill my declaration and decree as you embrace your full identity. Embrace what I say and watch what I do for my promises remain and my word is true. I wanna thank you for prophesying to us. <laughs> that is so profound. And that is so the Lord's heart. And that is so all into what I have to share tonight. It's just, I love it because when you're, when you're knitted in the spirit and you're in the same company, it's good to hear what you've been hearing repeated through someone else. It's affirmation, it's confirmation, it's strengthening. And I just really felt like this was because we went from, as you shared, we went from last words, just thinking about hard decisions and things we had to make, hard choices, things we had to leave behind. So it's, it's, it's clear the last words are there, but what's birthed out of it, except the seed fall to the ground and die. Mm. You know, nothing new can come forth. All I have to say is Lord God Almighty. This is so profound. I'm enjoying this because each one of you have built on what God is really, I believe what he's really speaking. We're going to get all the money stuff. You know, we're going to get all the anointed cloths and uh, you know, we're going to hear all of that stuff. But what really is amazing about those who have their hearts fixed on the Lord is that we're really looking for what he's doing in our heart mm -hmm. and in our mind and in our spirit. Those are the things that carry weight in the kingdom. Much will blossom. Mm -hmm. Much will bloom. Oh, my goodness. The delight of our birthright. I mean, my goodness. And that's what I'm looking for. Let's see what's been said here. <laughs> now, I'm probably going to um, go back. I don't know if I'm getting everybody. <laughs> there are some more comments. So I'm going to read. I got to go all the way up because there's a lot that's been said. <laughs> so I'm going to start from... Um, I'm just going to go with as we, this is Dominique, as we stay focused and aligned, we will experience great joy and peace of mind. Stay focused and aligned. That's my Isha, the fullness of your birthright. Get ready to advance while overcoming your circumstances. Listen, that part of preparation, when you're going through, I know for me, I can't speak for y'all, but the last thing you're doing is preparing for your overcoming. You're just, you're just trying to get through. So I just hear you, Lord. I hear you. Let the inner roar be released. Lejeune shared that. I'm fullness of my birthright. I'm getting ready. Dominique, my God. <laughs> Just ex exclamation marks for Chiquita. Christine said he was there and is always there in the midst of it all. Embrace your full identity. Christ in us again, that's being reiterated. Oh my goodness. Thank you, faithful and true. Embrace my true identity. Snap, snap, snap. Shaking the key. Snap, snap. Go ahead, child. This is good. Alignment is so important. That's what T said. Nico said, so much confirmation, beautiful. Deb said, wow, let us faithfully pursue your heart this year. That right there, Deb, that, that, that is what we're hearing. 
Yes, yes. Darlene said, this is a layer by layer, line by line, precept by precept for each person sharing tonight, like a balloon starting to fill up with water, but not bursting open. And Chanel said, so true. So I love it. When poets, one of the things we want to practice in the conservatory is when poets release their gifting under the power of the spirit. We want to do like we do when people speak in tongues. We want to interpret. We want to discern. We want to be able to um, dig into that and really get the meat of that in our hearts. So I've asked them. They already know what I want to do. And if they can do it, they can post it in the Scribal Prophets, uh, Scribal Prophets group or the Facebook Bible study group. And you all can have that because I know that we are hearing the Lord speak tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I'm blessed already. Wondering if I still need to teach. Because <laughs> you all just uh, took over. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. That's how ministry is. It would not be the Lord if we weren't hearing the same thing and some of the same messages tonight within our camp and within our company, so to speak. So go ahead, um, Janice, Janice, Janice. I've been waiting. This well, really is last words for you. <laughs> um, well, amen. Amen. Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Shame, pain, anger, confusion, and fear are just a few things that keep us from drawing near, near to the Father and things on his heart, near to the things that separated us from the start. Next comes the very thing that stills our shout, the shout of victory and praise that helps us get through the valley of our days. I don't know what you call her, but I call her Sister Doubt. Doubt also comes to make sure we never mature in wisdom, and knowledge and everything pure. Next comes the one full of disappointment unmet. I like to call her Auntie Regret. She causes us to regret things that may not have been meant to be like relationships and missed opportunities. Next comes the one who causes uncertainty. I don't know about you, but I call him Uncle Worry. His goal is to keep us anxious and upset about things out of our control. Uh, worry is a tricky little thing that we think is the norm. It desires to reshape us and cause us to conform. Next comes the one that loves to fight. You guessed it, none other than Big Brother Strife. Mm. He's bitter, likes friction and causing discord, mm. all to make sure we aren't on one accord. Let's choose to say no to shame, pain, anger, confusion, and fear. Don't allow them or their cousins into the new year. Make space on your path and clear the way for when the clock strikes 12, 2022 will be underway. This year, you will express gratitude for where you are and where you're going. You will walk in new levels of wisdom. It's already showing. New truths will be revealed as you move throughout the year. You will align and connect with both people and God more frequently. You will focus on operating in love and guarding your peace. This year, you will learn lesson after lesson, but don't be alarmed. These lessons will be blessings. So out with the old and in with the new. Here are my words for 2022. This year, like all others, will be about how you pursue it. My prayer is you will let go of the old, embrace the new, partner with God, and he'll see you through it. The words that he has given are on purpose, you see. They can set the tone for the new year for both you and me. Mm, 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 mm. I am so blessed by that. Oh my goodness. I believe that so many of us, if we are honest, deal with all of those relatives. <laughs> Every last one of them. 
doubt, sister doubt, auntie regret, uncle worry, big brother strife. Oh, shame. I mean, I want to thank you for that because I believe that's where many people are here and where they have, well, not maybe in this moment, but have dealt with this year. But I like the fact that we're reiterating these things have to be last words in order for the fresh to come in. I am so blessed by every one of them, every single one of them that have been revealed and exposed tonight. Listen, let's see what everybody is saying here. I thank you, Janice. This was, this was wonderful. <laughs> this is wonderful. Here I am losing my spot again as all these comments come through. Oh my goodness. I don't know where we're supposed to be, y'all. So I'm going, <laughs> I might be repeating. Okay, I'm probably gonna be repeating some stuff, but I wanna be sure that we honor the poets who shared tonight, who they sought God, they prayed and they listened. And sometimes it's easier to receive things that the Lord has to say when we take the time to ask the spirit what to say and what to um, reveal. I write a lot just spontaneously out of the Nabi realm. Um, most of you probably write out of the Nabi realm, but sometimes some things you have to go in the prayer for. <laughs> you know, you have to, let rest and sit on your heart is not just going to bubble up. It's not just going to reveal itself through a dream. You know, it's, it's, it's not, Rohi is not something we can count on all the time. So we have to just ask the right questions. And God, what are your last words? And we know these are God's last words because these are things he talks about continuously from Genesis to Revelation. So Darlene said, Janice, I had chills come up my arm because of these relatives. <laughs> Chiquita said no to shame, pain, and confusion. Dominique said no to shame, pain, and anger, confusion, fear, and strife. I love Christine. Just say no. <laughs> she would say that coming from a teacher who's been in the classroom through that movement. <laughs> No to shame, pain, and confusion. We have um, Brandy. This is really great. Thank you so much. You better say that. Yes, let's choose to say no. It's a choice, you guys. Your new year is a choice. <laughs> Dominique said wisdom, new levels of wisdom. Darlene said, wow. Yes, in 2022 said joy. Auntie regret, uncle worry, big brother strife. Woo, that was Bernadine. Darlene said, where's dumb? <laughs> Deborah said, lessons and blessings. Absolutely. You know, that's a good one, Deborah, because it's like when we learn something, it can be a blessing. It's only not a blessing when we don't learn, right? <laughs> when we're not learning, that's when it gets hard, harder than it should be. Chiquita said, wow, operating in love, focus. Yes, this is such a confirmation. Joy said, lessons will be blessings, embrace the new. Maisha, she said, I love this because I can see leaving behind these things that have held us back. And I just wanna share with you, every day is an effort to leave things behind. So you're moving forward as long as you can step before that mirror and say, no, I will not listen to these condemning thoughts. No, I will not enter into this shame. Sometimes we have to do things a thousand times before they become a reality in our lives. Look, I, my age, it took me X number of years to get here. Now I think one prayer is gonna shake it off. It works sometimes. And I'm thankful for every miraculous moment, but there are other things that we are in process concerning. And so I want you to be encouraged with that. Um, lessons will be blessings. James said that. Chanel said that was so good. Stephanie, I received this. Dominique, powerful. The strife one is sticking out to me because God's heart is always reconciliation. Darlene, fire. Um, so Christine, out with the old into the new. Um, thank you for the confirmation. That's Brandy. And we have joy, yes, on those relatives. 
Um, we have Virginia, continual deliverance, bring continual growth. Absolutely, continual healing in every possible way. Come through, Denise. I love that. Let go of the old, embrace the new, and go with God. It's just too many comments. It's even more comments than that. But I think that um, I'm going to make sure I save the um, comments. And if you guys want them, I'll figure out how to make that happen. I, in fact, what I'll probably do with this particular teaching tonight is make the link available so you all can just grab the link and go look and read the comments in real time if you want to. And so that'll be great. And, and I can't promise, I'm not making promises this year, but I would love to be able to clip these different parts out and just give them to you. So that is what I would love to do, but I'm watching my promises this year. God knows how to deal with us. I've been doing that for the last three or four months, but we have to be careful in the things that he alerts to us in our own character. So I want to thank you all for this tonight. Have you all been blessed? Have you all been blessed? We have so many gifts and talents in the midst of us. And we definitely want to take advantage of them. Um, we have um, more poets than this. I know you already know about Prophet LA. Some of you may not know about um, Sam, Samantha. She's a phenomenal poet. There's tons of poets, tons of poets here. I want to give a shout out to Minister Paul. Oh my God, Minister Paul is here. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that he is joining us. Father, we just speak blessings over him in community. We speak to total and complete healing in Jesus' name. Father, we believe you for miracles, signs, and wonders in every area of his life, Father, in his physical body, in his spiritual man, that it rise. We're going to literally um, just do what I believe the Lord is leading us to do today. My goal is to encourage you beyond measure. This is our um, New Year celebration, our New Year celebration. We heard from the last word, poets. I thank you for sharing your gifts. And so what I want to talk to you about is the established. And before we get into the message, I want you to already know that you are a part of a company that is the established. And it is a company that you've heard taught ever since you entered into your salvation and probably before it, but this is who we are. And we have to enter trials as the established. I've been talking to you extensively about what is to come, what is here and what is to come. Sometimes things around us get worse before they get better. But what we have to do is learn how to live in our peace and live in our faith and live in the joy of the Lord. We have to trust Holy Spirit to, to bring us into that place and to teach us how to enter that space regardless of what is happening around us. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And then we're going to um, pray some together and we're going to get some feedback from you all. And we're going to celebrate this new year. We're going to do that. So I will just tell you, this is the Scrabble Conservatory and it's a safe place to explore, activate, refine and demonstrate your gifts and talents. The conservatory is a college or university of study of the spirit, that's what we are. And a conservatory is just a guardian or a protector of a specific body of knowledge or work. Not an ownership, but just we feel that God has given us a heart to transform nations. All that means is the renewing of the mind to reinforce covenant, meaning to, to, to tell people that Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant, that everything that we have is rooted here. We elevate Christ above men. And I believe the Lord has given us this. It's always been something we've taught, but there's so much influenced by other things. People are influenced by influencers and popular prophetic voices. They're influenced by so much that we have to be careful that we're not elevating Christ 
that we're not elevating men and people above Christ. So we're always teaching in a way that gives Christ greater honor than every Moses in our lives, including leaders or myself in this ministry. We must elevate Christ above men. We lose everything and we cheat ourselves when we don't. And we're real big on increasing understanding. And that is why we make time for conversation. That's why we make time to um, talk and discuss because we want to be absolutely sure that we understand and that we don't walk away drawing conclusions about things when we could have really asked questions and gotten a better understanding. You know, we are living in a time when people get mad and upset about everything. So we want to be encouraged in knowing that I can ask questions and I don't have to worry about um, being ripped apart. Um, I don't have to be agreed with. Um, people can explain a, a, an opinion that's opposite of mine and I can be okay with that. But at least I'm understanding where this is coming from so that I have a correct point of reference. So right now, I just want to encourage you to get announcements, updates, and changes from the Facebook group, We Are Conservators. And we're into our message now. We're going to flip a little bit between scripture and the PowerPoint like I normally do. But let's just start with Psalm 145 and 13. This isn't our foundational scripture, but it is one that we're going to build with to get us to our point. Listen, we may be walking into a new calendar year, a new fiscal year, a new year for, for um, all kinds of things in the natural realm. But I always say, and I want you to remember that your new year is always centered upon the decision you're going to make in this moment. Psalm 145 and 13 says, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all the generations. The Lord is trustworthy and all he promises and faithful and all he does. The picture in the background I love because columns represent government. It represents archives and histories. It represents for me a place of importance, a place of dominion and authority, a place of um, protocol, a place of legislation, a place of establishment. So I use columns just because it prophetically speaks to me what I need in my own life and what I would love to have around me, you know, in this life that we have. I want to give you um, a few scriptures. Well, this one scripture, I want to go there real quick. I just want you to see, I'm not teaching this, but I want you to see where the foundation of Psalm 145 come from. And this is David. This is a Psalm of David. And this is what he's saying. He, uh, he's singing, he says, I will exalt you, my God, the king. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of your glorious splendor and majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. I love that David chose this. He said, I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of your power, of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. I'm just skipping down because he continues that, but he says, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. I just want to say to you that either we believe this is true or we don't. We must get to a point in our lives when we are working every day to convince ourselves of one thing, that the, Lord is, the Lord's word is true, that the Lord is faithful, that what he said applies to me, 
that this truth exists in my life and I have the power to kill that truth or I have the power within me to bring it alive. How can I say that? Easy, very, very easy. If you belong to Jesus, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Either that's true or it's a lie. Either you have the access to the same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead or you don't. So it almost puts us in a position of saying, oh my God, is, is the Lord really real to me? Is the Lord really real to me in my worst moment? And I'm gonna tell you, I've had some bad moments near the end of this year. But I'm telling you, the Lord always reminds me and I want him to remind you, it can be horrible. The worst thing you can imagine can happen to you. But we still end up in the same place and the best thing in the world can happen to you. And it still applies. Do I believe that the Lord is alive and well on the inside of me. Oh my goodness. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. And when we go back through time and we begin to look at it, all the horrible things, the tragedies globally, we come to see that this is still true. <laughs> it's still true. You may have gone through the greatest health fight of your life. It's still true. You may have lost a loved one in the midst of your grief, which you must walk through. The Lord is trustworthy and all the promises that he's made and faithful in all that he does. Listen, we're the established. And I hope that by the end of this, you can see the framework of being established and you can trust that you are established. God's kingdom is established on his love for us, his will for us, and on his promises, his pledges, his blessings. God's kingdom is established on his love for us, his will for us, and on his promises, his blessings, and his pledges. Listen, a lot of people are looking for a kingdom to come, but I'm telling you the kingdom of heaven is at hand and is living on the inside of you right now. Do you believe that? The kingdom of heaven is within you. We're the temple of the most powerful force ever to exist in the universe. We have access to everything Christ had access to and still has access to right there. I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and don't even know it, praying in the spirit. And my husband said, you were up praying last night, just randomly waking up. I said, what? I don't even remember that. I can do that. Don't need a mediator. Because I am the temple of Holy Spirit. I'm established in the kingdom because the kingdom is at hand within me. The kingdom has come. And we know this because when we prophesy, when we experience God, when we discern, we know the kingdom of heaven is at hand because the generation before the spirit did not have that at will like we do. Oh my goodness. Do we believe him? I'm just going to go back. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and he is faithful in all that he does. Oh, wow. I want to ask you this question as well. Are we holding on to his promises, the guarantees, the infallible truths that establishes his eternal intention? Do we really know what they are? 
And I ask this question because our generation, you know, there's a circus element to the congregation today. I mean, a, a three ring circus, you got ringleaders, acrobats, clowns on every corner, you got um, fortune tellers, you got everything happening in the church. And people, they're using the Bible as a tarot card. We're looking, we're cursing out people using tarot cards, but at least with them, we know what we got, right? <laughs> but it's slicker when people are using the Bible for these kinds of things. And, you know, people tell us this is the promise and this is, but listen, I just want you to hear me in the spirit. There are some infallible, immovable promises that are guaranteed to us and that are accessible to us as long as we are putting every effort into moving forward, as long as we are willing to lay down last words and move into new words. If we are rehearsing the past, how can we ever expect to grab hold of the future? If we are only able to see our fa failings, how are we ever able to grab hold of the future? And one of the reasons why I love the apostolic is that the apostolic won't entertain that. It just, it can't entertain that. And it's not that it's negative because people have to walk through their struggle, right? But the purpose of the apostolic is to get you over into alignment as quickly and as clearly as possible. So along the way, we have to have pastors help us in, in ministry. We have to have teachers that help us. We have to have evangelists that rah-rah us and get us on that cheering squad squad. That's not all they do. Basically, what I'm saying is exhortation and encouragement has to be the backbone. But you cannot dismiss the apostolic thrust in a pastor's life and evangelist life or who, whoever's life, or even in the life of an apostle that wants to see you lay down all of that stuff so you can walk in infallible truths in a certain place. We need all the gifts to work together. So are we holding on to infallible truths or are we holding on to truths that fall in that permissible realm versus the perfect will realm? Because that will make a difference with how we enter newness in our lives. Not that tomorrow is new, but that you are new tomorrow, right? Or are we holding on to our own desires so tightly that we do not understand what is guaranteed and then what we desire that could be conditional, that could be dependent on other things falling in place? What do I mean by that? And some of you may have quite questions about this later. There are things that didn't follow through in my life that I know God said, but they didn't fall through because other, they didn't come through because other people sometimes that are supposed to release things to you, they don't do obey God, right? Or something happens that nobody, especially you had control over and it caused those things to fall out of balance. But when that happens, do we still grab hold of what should have been or do we figure out how to move forward? So there's a lot to consider here, but I just wanna throw that out to you because I know that it is a place that many of you have um, um, understand, are struggling, but this is the key. You have to decide. You, not God, not the prophet, not anyone. You have to decide, I am letting go. I'm assessing where I am right now. I'm laying down what I thought was true and I'm willing to pick up a new way. Without that, how can we expect newness? How can we expect growth? How can we expect to move forward? But what we really need to know is what it is that is an infallible truth that I can hold on to and what are certain things in my life that may be conditional, that may be 
um, moving into a different place or a different lane. Oh my goodness. Let's take a closer look at the promises. If you don't know, I posted a um, link. I posted a link in the scribal conservatory Bible study group. You can go there if you would like, and you can download the file that I'm about to show you now. But I think it's um, very important to what we're going to, to talk about, what we're talking about. Now, this isn't mine. You see, it's the Log Church Cross Lake. If this list is reprinted with permission from 365promises.com, this is not mine. Listen, well, when I say conditional truths, I mean, if somebody tells you your husband is coming and we have taught people that prophets prophesy those things. So I'm talking about those kinds of things. There are some words that are conditional. And so those who are conservators know exactly what I'm talking about. There are some prophecies on your life that cannot come to pass if you are not obedient. It's that simple. It is that simple. So that is where I'm going with that. So we have to be clear that we are kind of can listen and kind of follow because there are promises that God made. Now listen, promises God made. I'm going to say that again. Promises that God made that have nothing to do with anything that we do except our alignment. Listen, promise one, I am the Lord your God and I never change. Do you follow what I mean? We have nothing to do with that promise. This is a declaration and it is a decree from the throne room. It was established from the beginning and it cannot be moved. He says, I am the Lord your God and I never change. He said, I am full of mercy and grace and I overflow with love. So no matter what you think, no matter what people prophesy, these are eternal truths. They are not conditional. They are God's word and he is not moving. They have not moved from Genesis to Revelation. They are eternal, eternal. The intentions of my heart will remain steadfast forever. These are declarations that God has made about himself. See, we hold on to a lot of promises that are not eternal. We have believed the circus. We have stood by and misunderstood what promises were. We think that just because God says, I'm going to be a millionaire, that that is not without condition. If you're not a good steward over your finances, if you don't know how to save, if you didn't get the education that aligns you with that, if you're believing everything is gonna fall out of the sky like magic, then we're in this place of spiritual confusion because the circus has taught us that we can believe blindly for a thing and it's going to come to pass. But God gets blamed for a whole lot of stuff that he never said. It's so important for us as sons of God and as believers to have balance in this area. And one of the number one ways of having balance is understanding what God said was promised to us. I got another one for you. God's words are corporate. I'm just gonna let that sit and see if any of you can grasp. Just put in the chat what you think I'm saying. God speaks from a corporate mantle. God speaks from a corporate mantle. God speaks from a corporate mantle. I hope you catch this. He's, he speaks to us individually, but his promises are corporate. What do I mean? Everybody is under, I am the Lord, your God, and I never change. Everyone is under, I will take hold of your hand to keep you from falling. Everyone is under, I give my spirit and unlimited measure, number 14. Everyone is under, I will provide every good thing you need to do my will. That's a big one. 
I teach on this one a lot <clears throat> in the conservatory. I will provide every good thing you need to do my will. To do my will. I will discipline you in love as a father who loves his children. Woo, that ought to help somebody. My power will rest on you when you are weak. God is a corporate promise. And we've lost that. The circus has caused us to be so individualistic that we've missed something so profound in the prophetic realm. He is not partial, absolutely. He has no favorites. This is why he can say that. Please download this. Please read this every day for the first 30 days of, of this year. Please, conservator. I can't expect everybody to do this, but if you hear God in this message, I am imploring you, go check out the scriptures. I will bless your life and keep watch over you always. That's true. If you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. That's a promise for everybody. I will shield your life and deliver you from the wicked. Read that in context. If you obey him, that applies. Cast all your worries on me because I really care for you. That's true. You are holy and free from blame because of Jesus' death. Colossians 1, 21 and 22. Oh my God. These are the promises that the apostles and prophets speak of when they talk about the promises of God. Oh my goodness. Our promises, the things that we believe we hear, some of those are true. Some of those are faithful. Some of those are undeniable for our personal sure word. You can do whatever you want with this list. Do whatever you want. It's free download. Go to the website. They'll tell you that it's available as a PDF. You can download it. Oh my goodness. Yes, send it to whoever. Because we need to see this. These are 365 promises, this whole sheet. But guess what? There are more promises directly from God than this. Way more promises than this in the scriptures. So don't count on this only. You can probably find another 400 on your own. God promised me I was going to have a shiny car and a big house. That probably won't happen. And if it does happen, thank God for it. But I, I hope you guys are understanding the difference that I'm making here. The line that's being drawn in the sand because we go into the new year with magic. This is my year. This is the year I'm gonna be a this and I'm gonna be that and God gonna put me before the great. When the scripture says right here, I only provide every good thing you need for when you're doing my will. Oh my God, when you're serving, when it's selfless, when it's in love, when it's broken. Oh, the shiny car and the house may be conditional, absolutely. And if you happen to be blessed by that as a gift, listen, if God gave you some things and it well, didn't come with no promise, don't idolize that because you have to do what is necessary to keep it. You have to do what is necessary to maintain that place. You still have to uphold the principles of being blessed. See, people just say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. But there are principles of blessings. If you need an example of that, if you remember the man who had in the Bible, the parable, I'm messing this up, but the parable was of a man who had an employee and the employee was, was at, well, he was in jail and he was begging for, for, for um, freedom. 
But the employer, you know, he was like, I'm going to keep you in jail. I'm just paraphrasing because I cannot remember that right now. But some of you should know exactly what parable I'm talking about. And then, so, you know, so, so God frees the man. The man gets favor. But look, do go and have the opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else. And he turns his back on the person who came to him for help. See, that's how we undermine our own blessing. It's when we get greedy and we begin to hoard and we begin to think more highly of ourselves than we are. You, there are principles to being blessed, not just principles as the circus teach to getting your blessing. Oh my God. Thank you. Could you copy that passage of scripture for me, um, Dominique, if you, if you can do it? Just a few lines from it. Promises. My power will rest on you when you are weak. Promise 19, I will bless your life and keep watch over you. Promise 24, my love will persevere through every situation. Promise 26, I look after foreigners and I help the fatherless and the widow. Promise 40, trust in me with these are are guarantees. Oh, these are guarantees. God wants us to be practical as we go into the new year, not magical, not operating in witchcraft. We need to reevaluate what witchcraft really looked like because there are people who operate in heavy, heavy witchcraft and don't even recognize it as such because we've accepted it. And they use the prophetic, and it's really a form of witchcraft. Oh my goodness. Here it is. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. That's the correct thing. That's it. Since he was not able to pay the master, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had be sold, be in prison, so to speak, to pay the debt, debtor's prison, which was very common, that, that practice was very common back then. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, okay, it was the servant. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. That's the posture that many people have after God blesses them. And God doesn't want their blessings require you to be a blessing. All these people, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Not even really understanding the weight of that passage. When we know what God's promises are, we must take them in their literal meaning. Literal, literal, literal place. What does this mean straight up? Without the revelation, what does it mean? Let us see them in the midst of his intention. What is God's intention? To have sons and daughters that rule and reign with him. To have sons and daughters that Operate in the highest level of the kingdom. What is the highest level of the kingdom? Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. The highest realm you can enter into the kingdom is the realm that put Christ on the cross. We must see these promises through that intention. We must. People hate that word intention now. It's a battle. They don't like for you to use it. But listen, those scriptures, loving God and loving others, there is nothing in the history of the Bible that, under, that, that usurps that passage. All the law and the prophets rest in that, in the life of Christ. Oh my God. Oh my God, let us see them in their intention. Let us understand them in eternity. In other words, listen, let's go back. I gotta show you this. 
I got to show you this real quick. I should have brought myself some water in here. I didn't. But listen, I want to show you this. Let us see this literally. I'm going to pick one. The earth belongs to me and all that is in it. God declared that. Oh, look, look, let's go up here. Second Corinthians 120. Promise number. Oh, they forgot a number there. But anyway, I'm going to use one that has a number. Okay, here it is. Promise number 43. I am your shelter and a place of safety from your enemy. Literally, it means what it says. I'm going to protect you. But we have to understand that in the context of God's protection, whether in the body or out of the body, right? I'm going to say that again. We have to understand that whether in the body or out of the body, body, whether life in the earth or death in the ground, because God is in eternity. All we have to do with some of these is look, Christ, let's go back. Jesus is an excellent example of that passage. Call on me when you are in trouble and I will rescue you. Promise number 42, Christ was rescued. He's not here in the earth physically as he was as, as he was as Jesus, but he is yet here. When we pass from death to life, that promise is activated. That promise is true for us who hold the spirit within our temple. That is true for us who have the ear of God. That is true for us in every growth place that we are in, in every development of, even in our stagnation, God is there. Oh my goodness. We have to look at scriptures like this. It's so simple. We are so quick to jump to revelation, but we need to slow down. We need to slow down. Let us understand them in eternity. Father, I want to understand from eternity tonight. I want to understand from intention tonight. I want to understand from point blank in my face, logos tonight, the literal meaning of it. And then, Father, I want revelation to have its perfect work. Let me have revelation. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I want revelation in this. Let us discern perfect will from permissive. Perfect will. Perfect will from permissive. Oh my goodness. Well, those promises are perfect. Sometimes the prophetic words we receive and the truth we receive in that, it's true. But if those conditions are not walked out, we nullify some of those prophetic words. That's why it's so important for us to know what promises are eternal. And I believe that this is a season in our life when we're going to be looking around at everything that is happening. We're going to be screaming, God, things are not getting better. But God said, I have made a promise to you. If you can just remember, it's finished already. I just need you, Teresa, to walk into a place where you can see it afar off, like those in the Hall of Fame. In Hebrews 11, they believed the promises, even though those promises, they would not live to see them in the natural realm. Oh God, I hope this is helping you all. We are established by perfect will. I'm just going to share that. Not permissive will, but perfect will. We're not established by permissive will. There are a lot of people that have established their whole lives by a prophetic word. God told me I was going to get married. God told me I was going to get this big house and a car. God told me they've established their whole life on conditions. Father, we come right now for those who will resist this word, 
And Father, we just stand in your presence and declare that our ears be open, that the eyes of our understanding, that we open them, that we choose right now in our heart to hear. We are inclined to believe personal prophecy more than we believe the promises and the prophetic oracles that you gave that are eternal. Give us balance, Lord. Show us how to cling to what is eternal and how to receive what you permit, but can let go when it doesn't come to pass that we can let go and we can say, God, I'm ready for my new. I'm ready for my next. I waited on this all my life. God, I, I repent because I believe the man more than I believe you. I believe my own ideas. Now I'm mad with you, God, because you did not bring those permissive places to pass. Oh my God. Oh my God, I am so quiet about. send it and see, I speak to the spirit of those that need to be broken, Father. Those that need to hear, Lord, this word, that need to know how to move forward. It's not a place of condemnation. They're getting life tonight. It didn't work. I, I, I turned around three times and I sold into the master prophet and I got nothing. I sold in that church for 30 years and nobody recognized my calling. And at no time did God say that was his perfect will. At no time. Father, I pray that they forgive you. We have choice. We have decision. And all you asked us to do was to hang on to what is perfect. Oh, let me show you this in scripture because we, we spend a lot of times telling people things and we don't show them where we get them from. We want them to just trust it because we said it. We want them to just believe it because we had a dream. This generation, I know I'm there and I'm talking all the people who are alive. This, this is not enough for this generation. Oh my God, Romans 12, it says, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, living in immersive life, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, tarot reading and believing there's hope and magic in the new year, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Oh my God. These promises are his perfect will. They're not just declarations. They're not just declarations. They're not just decrees. They are promises, eternal promises that will live in the spirit realm and still be true long after this earth passes away, long after our life ends. I hear you when you ask anything according to my will. So I better read these promises and I better study my word to know what the will of God is. I, I need to wash my mind away from the circus. I need to wash my mind. I need balance. I need to know how to lay this prophecy out and say, God, I'm going to trust that this is you, but I'm not going to build a mountain around it. I'm not going to order my life by revelation in this way. I'm going to be attentive to the move of God. I'm going to watch the timing. I'm going to look and see. I'm going to discern the times and seasons, God. Oh, my God. I will reward those who diligently seek me with the heart of faith. See, the bottom line is we have to believe and have faith that God's promises are true. 
We have to dismantle a lot of this stuff that we've been taught and trust that this is a new day. It may have worked for years because that's where people are. But I believe God really is doing something new and that he's opening up things to us because so much stagnation comes from the old. Not the old scriptures. I'm talking about the old stuff that we do. Striving, fighting for everything. Oh my God. Will I ever believe I have blessed you in Christ with every heavenly blessing? Would I ever believe Christ that you have done that? Look, promise number 70, I have blessed you in Christ with every heavenly blessing. If that's a promise, my only pre prerequisite is to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. That's the prerequisite because as I learn to love God, anything that is unfruitful in me, conviction will come. It will die and I will be raised up in truth. Oh God, we want to be made new and that newness is up to us. To be established means to uphold, means that God is upholding us. You can just do your own word study on this. He's upholding us, confirming us. He's setting us in place. He's validating us. He's making us stand. He's proving us. He's making us succeed. But see, this is the thing. This is the thing. That success will all day rest on his promises on his guarantees, on those things that are perfect. Those, God never fails because his promises are true, whether in this life or the next. I have carved your name in the palm of my hands. Promise 85. An eternal crown awaits you at the finish line, so keep running your race. I have made you a member of my own household. If you delight in my word, you will be fruitful and prosperous. Oh my God. I will cover you all day long as you rest between my shoulders. Come close to me and I will come close to you. Absolutely. God is here. I am delighted to give you my kingdom. Promise 125. <laughs> oh my goodness. Everything. He, the Lord promised us. He said, I've given you everything. I have given you already everything you need for life and godliness. Do we believe this? Faith is the bottom line. Belief is the bottom line. This is the mind of Christ. This is the mind of Christ that we have access to. If your thought life doesn't look like this, that's one of the number one signs that you are, are, are not in a place to receive everything God has for you. None of us are perfect in, them, in this place, but this is the key. Listen, 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 listen. Every day, we should be changing our language. If all you do is meditate on what you don't have, how everybody don't like you, nobody wants to be around, you will have all of that. Life's so hard for me. Something is going on in the mind that needs to be healed. All my haters, I mean, my God. Maturity is in demand right now. The earth is groaning and crying for the sons of God to be made known. It's a constant cry. Yet we trying to speak to a mountain with no mustard seed. <laughs> Somebody just said, all my life I had to fight. But yeah, I'm not going to go into that. But y'all know what that is who watched the movie.
<laughs> Maturity is in demand. It's in demand. But most people disconnect from people that push them toward maturity. All they want is somebody who will let them cry a river. I'm not with doctrines that constantly promote crying a river. Every single Ephesians 4.11 gift is dedicated to fullness. Yes, the pastor is a nurturer. Yes, the prophet points out sin, you know, the typical things we teach about those offices. Yes, the apostolic is a straight line. And yes, the evangelist does this and proclaims it. But at the end of the day, they're all fullness gifts. They're all positioned apostolically to bring the real you forth in Jesus' name. Oh my God. Grow up, church. We want a new year, right? There is nothing that this new year holds for us. Everything you need for life and godliness is on the inside of you. Last scriptures. Last two scriptures. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 let's see. I want to, I don't want to read. We won't do that. So let me just, uh, I'll just read this. I'm not reading it in context right now. Well, I'm gonna have to tell you about it. So Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth and he began with the scripture. A lot of us quote all the time, praise be to the God and father of our Lord Jesus, the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. But there's a whole discourse that happens after this. So Paul spends his time encouraging them about the troubles that he's having, all of the um, um, murders and all of that martyrdom and everything that's going on. So that's happening. So he, he wants to come and visit them. And so he's giving them some insight on this. But by the time we get to um, verse 12, this is what is going on. Now, this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and with godly sincerity. This is huge. We conducted ourselves with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. So we have to be careful because if you have read the whole new covenant, especially the letters of Paul, you know that they were battling the Egyptian gods, the Asian gods, the Greek gods, and all the gods in between. And in this particular area, they had all kinds of religions. And Paul had all kinds of people from those religions in his church, they had their gurus, they had their philosophers, they had the healers of their day, they had all of those kinds of people. And one of the things that I, I beg you in the conservatory, I love it when you listen to these people, but don't forget God. Don't forget God, because his voice is the preeminent voice just because something is laying beside and it sounds like the word, we want to go to the place where we know the source is pure and where the truth is true. Don't forget God. This generation that we are in now is led by influencers. And if you just watch social media, you're going to see a lot of your friends a lot just flocking from one influencer to the next one minister to they have no stability it's like eating at a smuggler's board or a buffet a little bit of this and a little bit of that equals to nothing but confusion there is something to be said by following scriptural principles of listening and hearing too many voices will drive you mad so just hold that but listen he says, now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. 
for we do not write you anything you cannot read or understand. And I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of Lord Jesus. What an encouraging thing to hear him say about the people he's leading while also gently rebuking them, gently aligning and correcting them. But this is the part that I want you to see. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you so that you might benefit twice. So he's changing his plans. He said, I was trying to do this, but it didn't work out. Why am I reading this to you? Because even the best laid plans can change. Even the greatest prophetic words can find a detour in the midst of personal prophecy. Even things you know God wanted you can do can take a turn because of circumstances beyond your control. Listen, I want you to hear him. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I attended to do this? This is what he's saying to you. Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes and no? We see a lot of the yes and no in the church. But see, Paul understood that there was a balance. He understood that I can feel like God is leading me this way. Verses um, 15 through 17, you can feel that God is leading you. Well, now I'm not talking about people who change their mind like night and day. We're not talking about that. If you were around somebody that God said one minute and he changed five minutes later, that's something else. That is not what I'm talking about here. So please don't use this verse to justify schizo in the realm of the spirit. Because Paul was a very stable apostle. He didn't change his mind often when he made up his mind to do things God had said. This is just an example that I wanted to share. So he said, do I make my plans in a worldly manner? Oh, I'm just saying yes or no. Yes or no. He's not doing that. But this is it. This is the part. But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. Let me go back because I hope you heard this. But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and yet, no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And we also love that part. Amen. God is not talking about the promises we make to each other. He is talking about the eternal promises he made to us. Because things concerning us can change. Hi, we have the best intention as people. I'm saying this for myself. You, we have the best intention. We promise things. And we have not fulfilled them. And we have the nerve to say God changed our mind. And God does not change his mind. So either God was lying or you were speaking from the flesh or your emotions or what you thought you could do, but it turned out you didn't have enough money to do it. So you blaming the devil on it now? When we've gotten confused, about what a promise is and what the yes and amen is for. The yes and the amen is for the promises in Christ. It is for the promises in Jesus. It is for the promises that God made that no man, no devil can interrupt or prophesy away. 
God is healing our hearts in this hour. He's calling us to return and to listen to him. He's causing us to reevaluate who we are listening to and what we're receiving into our spirit. He's giving us a new way of, of dissecting his will for us so that we are not confused. Oh my God. What is your desire for me, God? Read my word. Seek my kingdom first. And everything you need will be given to you. That's the promise that I have made you. I am a very present help in times of trouble. That is the promise that you can guarantee. Some of us have been through some horrific things in our lives. We are only here right now because promise 132 that was written in this book is true. Oh my God. I have prepared amazing things for those who love me. Those who love me. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, obey me. Oh my God, when's my time, God? And God is saying, when you gonna do what I called you to do? Well, I don't like being before people. Well, I can't answer that prayer if you too scared to do what I called you to do. It's crazy because God tells you this is your calling and he tells you to go do this and go do that. But we say, God, I'm not ready but yet he's the one who told you to do it. But we're wondering why things are not moving, why our new year is not manifesting, why some people can't sit in a place long enough to get a breakthrough. They get mad, something tiny happens and, uh, and they go wallow in their emotions and justify their behavior based on how they feel. Oh my God, but what if we endured those emotional places and rose above them? What if we beat our flesh into submission? As the word says, deny your ability to be offended. People derail their whole destiny on one word of offense, on one issue that they have not clarified or got understanding concerning, and they just accept it. They assume everybody knows what they did to offend them. And they're the only ones walking around messed up. Everybody else has moved on. Oh my God, how we get our new year, we grow up. We grow up, Psalm 119.38, last scripture, really last scripture, really gotta go. But I pray this blesses you. I got to read this one. Establish your word, God. Psalm 119.38. Write this one down, please, or take a screenshot of it. Establish your word and confirm your word in your servant, God, as that which produces reverence for you. New International Bible says, fulfill your promise to your servant, God, so that you may be feared. God's promises. God's promises, not the promise that you're going to have 15 children, not the promise that you're going to have this giant job down the street, not this promise that you're going to travel the world. Those things are probably true, but those are not the promises that you are established on. The promises that establish us in his word are eternal. They can't be changed because somebody perceives you are a witch. You could be saved the next day. Somebody cannot run you away because they don't like your lifestyle. God could flip that the next day. Establish your word. We are all on a journey. And my prayer for you my prayer for you, conservators, my prayer for you, guests, is that God establishes his word in you and confirms the promises that he has given to you. Oh, my God. Those are my last words. 
Those are my last words for 2021. And my words that lead me into 2022, fulfill your promise to your servant so that I may fear you. Fulfill your promise to your servant. Every time God fulfills a promise to us, our faith increases. Oh my God, our faith increases. And we gain more courage and more fear. We've spent a lot of time listening to this person and that person and, and listening to this and that and going here and there and everything we need is right there before us in a place of faith. Things may get worse before they get better. But one thing I promise you, God's word never fails. You still here, you're still breathing. You might not know what tomorrow is going to bring, but you have right now. You have this moment. You have the power to decide where you're going to go in the realm of the spirit. You have the, the power to decide to roll in the mud or climb out for it and jump in the river. Oh my God wants our souls clean. I listen to all these prophetic words and I'm grieved because our soul, our heart is what God is dealing with. Listen, whatever else is going to happen in Babylon belongs to Babylon. But what is happening in the kingdom belongs to us. We've got a choice to make, scribes. Father, I just thank you for bringing us together tonight. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you for the new year that is already on the inside of us. I thank you, Father, that we are begging for who we already have. Father, I decree and declare that we will recognize that Holy Spirit is in our temple. He's waiting to be used. He's waiting to be called upon. Oh my God, Father, I'm, I pray that we know that we have everything we need for life and godliness. I pray, Father, that we understand that community is needed so that what is in us can be activated. I thank you, Father, that we won't think that people hold our destiny. No man holds our destiny. No man holds our destiny. No church, no leader, no school. Lord, they can go and worship wherever they want. You can still be with them because your word is dependent on your promises. Father, I thank you that you are the God that, that aligns anything in our lives that is misaligned. You are the one that makes the way straight. We are only able to do anything by the power of the spirit on the inside of us. Without your presence, we are nothing but shells and hulls, bales of hay, things that will burn up. But it is your spirit, God. Father, our last words should be that every good gift that, re that we receive comes directly from your hand, God. We want it from your hand. We're not just making declarations like magic. We're making these promises real to us so that our inner man shifts and changes. Father, we speak by faith to the health of everyone on this line tonight and our loved ones suffering in their body, um, fighting sickness and disease. I believe your word, God. You promised us good health. So we stand with them in that area in Jesus' name. You promised us a sound mind. Lord, you said the sound mind is for us. You promised that. We declare that we are lining up with those things in our speech. And, and I thought your word says, Lord, as a man thinketh, so is he. So that means that in order for me to change, 
Your word says, I will have what I say. So that means in order for me to change, I need to do more than pray. I need to activate the prayer. And Father, I pray for those with mental issues and conditions that may prevent some of this from having this perfect work. But Lord, as you told me concerning myself when I was in that place and what you prophesied concerning family members that are disabled and that are delayed in their minds, you said you ministered to them where they are. So Father, we stand in agreement with that because everyone you created. And Lord, I believe you commune with every creature. And Father, we declare that we will use our words, that your words in us will not return void in Jesus' name. In this new year, Lord God, if we have to kill negative Susie, that's a part of that relatives that Prophet Janice shared. Father, if we have to use that word, we come against negative Susie right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare a life-giving Susie, a life-giving Jane Doe, rise in the name of Jesus. Beauty comes from ashes. And Lord, your church has already come out of the ashes. We just see it afar off in the United States and abroad. We see it afar off, but it has already come out because Jesus finished the work. The perfect church already exists in Christ. But we declare our entrance into the deeper things of the spirit. Deep but simple in Jesus' name. 2021 is ending. But Father, eternity is in your hand. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. 